Hey guys, it's Miss Nancy G. So we're going to be reading Charlotte's Web today. The last chapters that you guys read were about Dr. Dorian and Mom's visit with Dr. Dorian and um, the crickets. And in the chapter, the crickets, we learned that summer is coming to an end and everything's changing. And now we're going to read about them off to the fair. So I am on page 118. 118 and it's chapter 16 off to the fair and we already when I look at this chapter I see this really funny picture of this huge pig and a and words that say first prize right there and that makes me think hmm, maybe there's gonna be some sort of contest right and I don't think that Wilbur is gonna be as big as that pig is though all right, here we go, chapter 16, page 118. The night before the county fair, everybody went to bed early. Fern and Avery were in bed by eight. Avery lay dreaming that the Ferris wheel had stopped and that he was in the top car. Fern lay dreaming that she was getting sick in the swings. Lurvy was in bed by 8.30. He lay dreaming that he was throwing baseballs at a cloth cat and winning a genuine Navajo blanket. Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman were in bed by nine. Mrs. Zuckerman lay dreaming about a deep freeze unit. Mr. Zuckerman lay dreaming about Wilbur. He dreamt that Wilbur had grown until he was 160 feet long and 92 feet high and that he had won all the prizes at the fair and was covered with blue ribbons and even had a blue ribbon tied to the end of his tail. Down in the barn cellar, the animals too went to sleep early, all except Charlotte. Tomorrow would be fair day. Every creature planned to get up early to see Wilbur off on his great adventure. When morning came, everybody got up at daylight. That day was hot. Up the road at the Arabelle's house, Fern lugged a pail of hot water to her room and took a sponge bath. Then she put on her prettiest dress because she knew she would see boys at the fair. Boys? Why does she care about boys? Mrs. Arabelle scrubbed the back of Avery's neck and went and, and wet his hair and parted it and brushed it down hard until it stuck up to the top of his head. All about six hairs that stood straight up. Avery put on clean underwear, clean jeans, and a clean shirt. Mr. Arabelle dressed, ate breakfast, and then went out and polished his truck. He had offered to drive everybody to the fair, including Wilbur. Bright and early, Lurvy put clean straw in Wilbur's crate and lifted it into the pig pen. The crate was green. In gold letters, it said, Zuckerman's Famous Pig. Charlotte had her web looking fine for the occasion. Wilbur ate his breakfast slowly. He tried to look radiant without getting food in his ears. In the kitchen, Mrs. Zuckerman suddenly made an announcement. Homer, she said to her husband, I'm going to give that pig a buttermilk bath. A what? said Mr. Zuckerman. A buttermilk bath. My grandmother used to bathe her pig with buttermilk when it got dirty. I just remembered. Wilbur's not dirty, said Mr. Zuckerman proudly. He's filthy behind the ears, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Every time Lurvy slops him, the food run downs around, runs down around the ears. Then it dries and forms a crust. He also has a smudge on the side where he lays in the manure. He lays in clean straw, corrected Mrs. Zuckerman, corrected Mr. Zuckerman. Well, he's dirty and he's going to have to have a bath. Mr. Zuckerman sat down weakly and ate a donut. His wife went to the woodshed. When she returned, she wore rubber boots and an old raincoat and carried a bucket of buttermilk and small wooden paddle. Edith, you're crazy, mumbled Mr. Zuckerman. But she paid no attention to him. Together, they walked to the pig pen. Mrs. Zuckerman wasted no time. She climbed in with Wilbur and went to work, dipping in her paddle in the buttermilk she rubbed him all over. The geese gathered around to see the fun. So did the sheep and the lambs. 
Even Templeton poked his head out cautiously to watch Wilbur get a buttermilk bath. Charlotte got so interested she lowered herself on a drag line so she could see better. If you guys look at this picture here on page 121, you can see Charlotte right here. There's Wilbur. Can anybody see Templeton in that picture? Hmm, I don't see him, but you guys let me know if you see him. He could feel the buttermilk trickling down his sides. He opened his mouth and some buttermilk ran in. It was delicious. He felt radiant and happy. He feels radiant a lot nowadays, huh? Remember in the beginning of the story when he said he wasn't terrific and he didn't feel radiant? When Mrs. Zuckerman got through and rubbed him dry, he was the cleanest, prettiest pig you ever saw. He was pure white, pink around the ears and snout, and smooth as silk. Mr. The Zuckermans went up to change into their best clothes. Lurvy went to shave and put on his plaid shirt and his purple necktie. The animals were left to themselves in the barn. Everyone's getting really dressed up for this county fair. Everyone's taking their time, having a delicious breakfast. Must be a really important day, huh? The seven goslings paraded round and round their mother. Please, please, please take us to the fair, begged a gosling. Then all seven began teasing to go. Please, 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 please. They made quite a racket. Children, snapped the goose, we're staying quietly, quietly, quietly at home. Only Wilbur, Ilver, Ilver is going to the fair. Just then, Charlotte interrupted. I shall go too, she said softly. I have decided to go with Wilbur. He may need me. We can't, we can't tell what may happen at the fairgrounds. Somebody's got to go along who knows how to write. And I think Templeton better come too. I might need somebody to run errands and do general work. I'm staying right here, grumbled the rat. I haven't the slightest interest in fairs. That's because you've never been to one, remarked the old sheep. A fair is a rat's paradise. Everybody spills their food at the fair. A rat can creep out late at night and have a feast. In the horse barn, you will find oats that the trotters and pacers have spilled. In the trampled grass of the infield, you will find old discarded lunch boxes containing the foul remains of peanut butter sandwiches, hard-boiled eggs, cracker crumbs, bits of donuts, and particles of cheese. In the hard-packed dirt of the midway, after the glaring lights are out and the people have gone to bed, you will find veritable treasures of popcorn fragments, frozen custard dribblings, candied apples, abandoned by tired children, sugar fluff crystals, salted almonds, popsicles, partially gnawed ice cream cones, and the wooden sticks of lollipops. <laughs> Everywhere is loot for a rat. In tents, in booths, in haylofts, why, a fair has enough disgusting leftover food to satisfy a whole army of rats. Templeton's eyes were blazing. Is this true? He asked. Is this appetizing yarn of yours true? I like high living and what you say tempts me. It is true, said the old sheep. Go to the fair, Templeton. You will find that the conditions at the fair will surpass your wildest dreams. Buckets with sour mash sticking to them, tin cans containing particles of tuna fish, greasy paper bags stuffed with rotten. That's enough, cried Templeton. Don't tempt me anymore. I'm going. Good, said Charlotte, winking at the old sheep. The sheep is really good at convincing Templeton to do things. Remember when the sheep convinced Templeton to help because of all the things that the that Wilbur's trough has that the sheep like or that the rat likes? Sheep's pretty good convincer, huh?